Welcome to BC Foster Basics. I'm Shimshar Pannon. I've been a foster parent for 29 years in the Lower Mainland. Today we'll be discussing the important role that reporting and documentation plays in your work as a foster caregiver, as well as some strategies and tips for making sure that your record keeping is thorough, organized, and reliable. What is the difference between reporting and documentation? Reporting is a spoken or written account of something that one has observed, heard, done, or investigated. Foster caregivers are expected to provide consistent reporting of activities for each child or youth in their home. Some ministry and agency offices may require specific reporting formats for submitting your documentation. Documentation refers to material that gives official information or evidence that serves as a record. Documentation in the context of fostering refers to all record keeping activities, including keeping daily or weekly logs of the activities of children or youth in your home, behavior and incident reports, and communication with ministry or agency staff or a child's relatives. Documentation encompasses all the information necessary for thorough record keeping. It allows you to maintain and provide a clear picture of events and information. Why is documentation important? Beyond being a contractual obligation, documentation serves a multitude of invaluable purposes for you, the children in your care, and care team members as well. Thorough documentation ensures that you can always provide information that is requested and that you can refer back to your records when necessary. It also helps you stay organized, reducing the chaos of managing a busy home. From a safeguarding point of view, Thorough and consistent documentation will help to protect you in the future should there be allegations, quality of care reviews, or investigations. Children and youth who have been in your care will gain the ability to access the documentation which you submitted in relation to their care when they turn 19. Your records may provide them with important information about themselves and their history, as well as the ability to better understand the events related to their time in foster care. Another reason your documentation is so important is that workers can use the information you've recorded to better inform future placements and to determine what kind of support a child or youth may need. Though it's difficult to provide a comprehensive list, some key things you should make sure to record are day-to-day -day activities involving children in your care, visits with a child's family members, conflicts or behaviors that are notable and may be important, Incidents or concerns related to the child in your care. Problems with scheduling or missed appointments. Important communication with workers, the child's family members, or other caregivers. Meetings with workers, care circle members, health professionals, or school staff. Placement discussions. Care plan or contract modifications. How to create useful documentation. Making a habit out of documentation can seem daunting at first, but if you keep some basic principles in mind, it will become a routine practice. Thoroughness. Creating thorough documentation means you make in-depth notes about your activities. Examples include taking notes or recording meetings or emailing workers to confirm what was discussed over the phone. Making sure to save text messages, receipts, and other paperwork related to the children in your home. You may need to reference this information later, and this way you'll always have it on hand. Documentation is only helpful if you are consistent with your note taking. Though sometimes it may seem like an extra effort that you would rather avoid, developing good consistent documentation habits will keep you prepared for the unknown and unexpected. While it can be easy to let personal opinion color the way you record events, this is usually not the best approach to take. Notes and observations should be factual and impartial. Rely on practical observations as it is best to document only what has happened and exclude any interpretation. In the same way that documentation is only useful if you're consistent, you'll need to stay organized with your recording so that you can find your notes when you need them. Along with the requirement to file things so they remain private and secure, be sure to record all relevant details including topics, people involved, dates, and times. Include page numbers if necessary. As is required by the ministry policy, you must ensure that all identifying documentation regarding children is kept securely. If sending unsecured communications such as email or text referencing a child in your home, use the child's initials only. 
In all other cases, follow the ministry privacy requirements for children and youth in care. Lastly, we'll leave you with some specific tips compiled by experienced foster caregivers that you may find helpful for creating useful documentation. Always CC your resource worker on emails related to your work as a foster caregiver, such as correspondence with guardianship workers and family members. If necessary, you can CC team leaders to ensure accountability. Follow up on phone calls with workers by sending an email confirming the contents of conversations. This ensures there's a written record of what was discussed. Always date your documentation. Use page numbers if not utilizing a bound book for your notes. Discuss your documentation methods with your resource worker and collaborate with them to ensure that they understand your process. Be sure to include any additional information or documentation practices that your resource worker requests. If you have any questions about reporting and documentation, please contact your regional support agency or BC Foster Parent Association at 1-800-663-9999.